done. Beer is done. Beer is done. And some. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to this episode of the Beer Chasers. I'm Preston. Today we're joined by Ian Williamson, head brewer of Two Henrys Brewing. Ian, how's it going? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, my friend. So today we are up here at Two Henrys. We're going to talk about the significance of the name and the history. We're going to try some of the beers, talk about the brew house. Ian, you ready to go? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go ahead and do this. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let's talk about Two Henrys and the name. Where did the name come from? So Two Henrys is named after Henry Plant and Henry Flagler. And those are really the two dudes who um, industrialized Florida and paved the way for um, you know the, the tourist, tourism and destination state that we have today. Um, Henry Plant really put the railroads through the sort of central Florida and sort of down the, the Gulf Coast. Henry Plant really did the same thing on the East Coast. And so you have um, Henry Plant's system of East Coast Railways. You had, you know, Henry's uh, Henry Plant, or sorry, Henry Flagler's system right. of East Coast Railways. You had uh, the, the steamboat to Cuba, and he had the whole um, a whole deal worked out with the uh, ferrying people back and forth to Cuba. Mm -hmm. um, and so we try to incorporate a lot of that Florida history and a lot of those things into our names. Yeah, this is like late eighteen um, hundreds. I mean, at that time, yeah, we're you had, you we're had horse and buggy and exactly. steamboats, and so these guys really paved the way to uh, have. Florida really become a state of population. Before yeah, exactly. then, it was, you know, Indians and indigenous people, but yeah, exactly. There wasn't a whole lot here before then. Um, I mean, in the in the um, even as far back as the Civil War, we Florida was referred to as like the breadbasket of the South. There was still a lot of a lot of agriculture and things like that being grown here in Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we kind of relate back, harken back to that. We're we are on a 27 acre blueberry farm. Um, we've got. You know, we have a uh, four or five acres of thornless black raspberries. We've got cows on on our farm in the back forty. We've got some donkeys yeah. back there. So we're on a farm. We kind of harken back to that. But our um, our founding um, name and everything is uh, is related to the the Henrys and how they built Florida into what it is. And you know, we felt like that was kind of fitting with um, building Florida into one of the craft beer destinations that we are yeah. today. So um, the Henrys built it into a tourism destination and. We like to think that we're helping to build it into a craft beer destination. Very cool. So, so um, in actuality, the, the location started as a winery, Keel and Curly Winery. Yeah, so I mean, it, even, it started even further back than that. It was a landscaping company, and then uh, several years later, they uh, started. They decided to take out the, to, or not landscaping, company, nursery. Um, they decided to take out the nursery and put blueberries down. Um, once, the, once we had all the blueberries, they decided, well, you know, we've got all these blueberries, let's do something with them. Mm -hmm. So they started making wine um, out of the blueberries. Joe Keel, our founder, actually made the very first batch of wine on site in his kitchen. Right. Which uh, is like, literally right next door, right? Which that, is they literally live in the right house next door, next door yeah. Door Absolutely. Brewery. Yeah. So it's, I don't know, it's, it's a pretty good setup. He rolls out of bed and he's at work. Yeah. Um, at the same time, that dude's, he's the hardest working dude we have yeah. because, you know, he, ro he rolls out of bed and he's at, he's at work. work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, it was a blueberry farm, and then we opened the winery maybe 13 or so years ago. Um, about three or four years ago, we started to, started trying to open the brewery. Um, we worked a little bit with Scar City, and uh, I think the first batch of our Seven Mile Bridge IPA was actually brewed on the Scar City system over in, uh, over in Tampa. And then when they wanted to start brewing, making cider, to make cider, you need a winemaker's license. And we are the closest winery to Cigar City. Right. And so they came over here and they made their first few batches of cider over here. Cool. Um, and so once they did that, we also kind of got the cider bug. And so we started making yeah. cider. We started making our own cider. Um, and so now it's, you know, there's wine, beer, and cider all made on site. And we've actually just started dabbling in uh, some meads. Okay, so cool. we're going to start looking at making some meads in the near future. Very cool. That's yeah, cool the way that the, the location's set up. You kind of have the wine side over here, and then you have the, the beer and cider side or the other way around. Yeah. But it's kind of cool. And even in our tasting room, you know, you have, um, we kind of, you can, you can order anything you want from regardless of which bar, but we have two bars in here. One is uh, very obviously is more of a wine bar. We have the wines and all the medals that we want for all the wines displayed behind it. On the other side, we have um, the beer side. It's very obviously more of a beer-oriented side. But you can order either one from either side. But we try to we try to really play up that dichotomy and that we have all of these things to offer because we're on such a great location. Cool. How did you get involved in brewing and home brewing? Um, I started home brewing in 2010, right when I graduated from college. Um, I had kind of started researching it and looking into it uh, as I was a senior in college. And I was living on campus at the University of Florida, and so you can't really... It kind of discouraged making making alcohol on campus. Yeah. <laughs> um, so as soon, but as soon as I moved off campus, I started move, making my own beer. 
Uh, that was basically 2010. Did I did you that start for, all green around the bat, or did you, did you start with extract? Uh, my or? very first batch was actually my very first batch was a Mr. Beer kit. Okay. So that's I, where I started. Yeah, so. that's where a lot of us started. Um, really bottom of the barrel. I think we did that for one batch, and we're like. Yeah. We can do this better. Yeah, I did and maybe so, eight or ten, and I always got the same tasting beers. It was my beer. I was proud of it, but it was definitely, you know, just pour yeah, some stuff not, in. Yeah, there's you know, not much like, to it. It doesn't it doesn't have that tangible sort of feel yeah. to it where you're like, oh, man, I this is handmade. Right. And, um, it's kind of like just mixing stuff together. It just doesn't yeah. feel quite as satisfying. Um, so I did that for, I think, one batch, and then we were like, nah, man, we need to go We need to go all grain with it. Um, right so, in. And, yeah, just dive right in. And we started brewing all grain. Um, like I said, back in like 2010, and I did that for five or six years, and then um, I was living up in Gainesville at the time. I had been, to, I went to the University of Florida, mm-hmm. and uh, I was living there for a few years after that. And my roommate and I were home brewing, and then uh, Plant City is my hometown. And when uh, an assistant brewer position came open here, uh, I just I jumped at the opportunity. I, yeah. you know, I sent my resume in, and I, I happened to know one of the guys who was working here at the time. Always helps. And it always helps, yeah. And I sent him my resume. I was like, hey, I don't know if I need to send it to somebody else, but here's my resume. Let me know what's up. And he said he just responded back almost immediately. He said, yep, you have you have responded to exactly the right person. Um, we will do an interview tomorrow. Great. And it was it was it was less than like two days, and I was hired. So, uh, really, it was a sort of a right place at the right time right. kind of situation. Cool. So you can talk about the uh, the brew house set up here at uh, Two Henrys. Yeah. So uh, we are still are on our original brew house. It's a seven barrel brew house. Uh, so it's about two hundred and twenty ish gallons. Okay. Uh, we started off with uh, three seven barrel fermenters and a seven barrel bright tank. Um, pretty soon after that, we graduated a little bit and we installed two se- two fifteen barrel fermenters. So right. um, double brewing and those are brewing twice into them. Um, a little bit after that, we graduated to a 15 barrel bright tank. The seven barrel bright tank went over to the winery and became the bright tank for our ciders. Um, after that, we got you know three. We got a few more 15 barrel fermenters, and then a few more 15 barrel fermenters, and then a few more 15 barrel fermenters, <laughs> um, and then we got a 30 barrel fermenter this right, year. I see where this is going. Yeah, so uh, we we went from having a fermentation capacity of about six, let's see, the uh, 700 ish gallons. To now, we have a fermentation capacity of uh, a couple thousand gallons. So, a lot, uh, pretty, pretty significant increase. We've got 17 fermenters. And it's uh, brewing daily, drugging. Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday, yeah. We're uh, we're in our slow season right now, so we're only single brewing most days. Okay. Um, in the busy season, we'll be brewing four. We'll be double brewing four to five times a week just to keep up. Yeah. So I think we, if we mentioned it, we glossed over it. But this is a huge campus. I mean, this isn't just. A brewery. You guys actually oh, have a farm. There's blueberries back there. Yeah, you know. absolutely. It's a it's a huge property. It's about 27 acres in total. Uh, we've got four or five, uh, I think three or four acres of thornless black raspberries on site. We don't really harvest those, but we do open them up to you pick um, when they're in season, okay. which is late May to June. Um, we have about 20 acres of blueberries. Uh, which we'll harvest those. We'll use those for some of our beers. We use them for certainly for our blueberry wines that we make on site and our blueberry cider. Um, we do a lot of stuff with blueberries. It's yeah. kind of it's kind of our shtick. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, we also have some. We have four or five cows on site. We got a couple donkeys. Uh, I think that's it. But there may I don't know. There, there yeah. may, there's probably plans. It's not for just a brewery. Else. I mean, no. It, it's really cool to come out here and check it out because again, you know, I've done the brewery tours before, but this is not just a brewery tour. You get to walk through the farm section yeah. see everything you know that's it's really cool it's definitely something different absolutely. and unique absolutely it's a kind of a unique spot i feel like we get a little bit glossed over by um just because of our location so mm-hmm. when pe- people are traveling in florida north south uh you basically they're either going through the turnpike which is in orlando or you're going through i-75 which is in tampa right. and so we're kind of in between the two yeah. and so uh we kind of get glossed over a little bit but it's a great destination and we have yeah. beer wine and cider on site we just um installed the restaurant uh, right so we got a lot of food back in i, th- I want to say april we, we put the restaurant in and it's been it's blown up so far um and it's doing really really well very cool well i've got some beers in front of us let's let's talk through each one and have a sip of it and kind of see what we have so first up what do we have here the one on our left is uh probably our flag it's our Biggest flagship beer. It was very the very first one of the very first ones that we brewed. It's a German style Helles Lager. Yeah. Um, it's brewed very very traditional ingredients. Um, German Haller Tower hops. Uh, German uh, Lager yeast. It's very basically as traditional as you can get. The name is Gilded Age. It's the Gilded Age Golden Lager. Yeah. It's um yeah. 
I love that, man. Light crisp. I love the the sweetness of the Hellas, but it's still a light beer. So it's yeah, not like it's, a brown ale sweetness. It's, it's, it's got a it's got a really great balance to it. I've um, I've been working on tweaking that a little bit and, and increasing sort of the hop aroma on it. Not a lot more bitterness or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, it's but, great. I love um, it a lot. I love it. It's really nice and dry. It's a fantastic beer for a hot day. Yeah. I have drank. Yeah. <laughs> quite a bit of it in, in session before. So, yeah, yeah, like you said, it, it's dry, but there's still a, a sweetness from the malt you're getting. So it's not yes. like a sugary sweetness. It's a nice yes, bready. Exactly. It's very, it has a really nice bready note. That's, Ooh, that's, a, good, fantastic. that's a good word for it. Uh, next up, we have the Biltmore. Yeah, we have our Bellevue Biltmore Blueberry Vanilla Wheat. It's named after the Bellevue Biltmore Hotel, which is in like the Clearwater area. Mm -hmm. It was one of the ho one of those hotels that Henry Plant built as he was building up the state. Right. So again, um, sticking was, with that history, the Florida history. E exactly. At one point, it was the largest wooden structure. Actually, it might still be, but it was the largest wooden structure in the state of Florida. Wow. Um, and so it's it, it was a huge hotel and a huge like luxury hotel for us. So blueberry um, vanilla wheat. Yeah, it's awesome. it's made with uh, very natural blueberry and vanilla extracts. Dude, that's fantastic. Yeah, so it's, it has a really nice um, almost biscuity note to it. Yeah. Um, and to me, it really really evokes a blueberry muffin or a blueberry right, pancake absolutely. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that vanilla helps with some of that too. Like it's not cloyingly vanilla sweet. Like it's just yes. got that nice little touch of vanilla to kind of help support some of exactly. that. Exactly. To, to me, it's really balanced. It's an American wheat beer, American wheat ale base. Um, we use an American ale strain, so it's not a, an American ale yeast strain. Um, so it's not super like clovey right. or right. heavy vi vitamin E. Yeah. Um, just very clean, and then we add the the blueberry and the vanilla to it, and that uh, really, to me, like I said, it's like a blueberry muffin. I, it's it's one of our best sellers. It's right now. It's actually over at uh, the Epcot Food and Wine Festival. Oh, cool. uh, last year and this year we were featured, one of the featured beers there. So, so this is really our homebrew show. You don't have to give away any of your, your industry secrets here, but if someone wanted to use blueberry in a beer, what, what approach would you advise them to go with? Honestly, we, for this beer and for our blueberry, for our uh, Rosa Jalapeno Blueberry Porter, we use a natural blueberry flavoring. Mm -hmm. um, but I would, I mean, I would definitely go with a, you know, just added in secondary fermentation and, uh, I don't know, we kind of we kind of blend it to taste a little bit, right. and we've we've dialed it in, but uh, nothing you know nothing crazy with it. It's what do you think on like basic. pounds per gallon? Or if you want to make a five oh, gallon geez. batch, because I've heard blueberry, it's very faint. You have to use a lot of it. Yes, yeah, so exactly. So that's exactly why we ended up switching over to using uh, like a like a flavoring for it yeah. instead of using um, real blueberries. Uh, because for a blueberries don't taste like blueberries once they ferment out. Right. They they have a very earthy flavor, mm -hmm. um, and so you get sort of like a faint blueberry kind of note, and then just like a very real earthiness to it once they ferment out. Um, so if, if you're gonna use if you're gonna use any kind of fruit in a beer, you've got to use way more of it than you think you're right. going to. Um, with the exception of like I don't know orange peel and stuff like that because right, right. that, that stuff goes a long way. Yeah, but, those are more you know, oily than anything, anyway. Exactly, yeah. you're getting that uh, that the uh, you know the uh, essential oils and stuff right. out of the skins and things like that. But with blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, things actually raspberries come through pretty well. Yeah. But blueberries and strawberries especially, we've done because we're in Plant City, we've done a few, we've done right. several beers with with strawberries. Yeah. You get a bushel of strawberries for like four dollars. <laughs> my uh, my dad's whole family is actually strawberry growers. Oh, so right. last year we did a strawberry saison and uh, I went to my uncle and I said, hey, can I have some strawberries? And he was like, well, how much do you want? And I was like, how much can I have? And so we, we, <laughs> we ended up juicing a hundred pounds Holy of strawberries cow. and adding that right into our saison. It, nice. ca it came out really well, but even a hundred a hundred pounds of strawberries in a 200 gallon batch yeah. was kind of faint. Wow. So I mean, if you're using real fruit, and it's, it's gonna it's gonna take a lot to really get that flavor. Right. Um, yeah. So cool. So next up we have a triple. Yeah. So it's I a, love it's, my Belgians. It's a pretty traditional Belgian style triple. I yeah. there's a little bit more hot profile than super it's, clear. Than it's normal. Yeah. I, that's one of the things we've been working on in the last six months or so is making the beers a little bit clearer. Yeah. Um, not just for a. a uh, aesthetic purpose of they, they look better, but I've, I we've really noticed that, especially with uh, our IPA, that on the batches that come out clearer, it actually just tastes cleaner. Yeah. Um, and you you get a really a much cleaner hop profile out of it. Yeah. And stuff like that. So we've really been working on um, clarifying the beers, and you can see most of these are. Yeah. They're all very they're all very clear with the exception the of the wheat, wheat beer. Of course it should be. Wheat, Cloudy, and then yeah. obviously your porter is yeah. is is pretty dark, but. Well, so this pretty pretty traditional style Belgian. More or less traditional. I was um, 
Ooh. perhaps perhaps a little bit more hop forward than uh, yeah. than might be than might I'd be agree with that, but traditional. But it's America. You're allowed a little bit of hop. It's America. America. Yeah. No, exactly. that's pretty good. Exactly, I love it. It's uh, Cascade hops, and I think there's some citra in there as well. And okay. You know, get a little bit of that nose, that citrusiness to it. Yeah, but, but it's I think nice. That you I... still get some of that, like the, the bready sweetness from the yeast, but uh, the hop balance is actually nice. If you watch our show, people do. No, I'm not a hop guy. I really don't like hops. I'm more of a multi sweet guy. But when used in balance, is always a key, and that's nice. You know, it's, it's a little Americanized, but it's with the right touch of balance. Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't bastardize it and put. You know, six ounces of dry hops in here. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever. Hon be, honestly, my my inspiration for that beer, one of my inspirations for that beer, was uh, the Copper Tail Unholy Triple. Mm -hmm. I love that beer. Any, I live over in the Ebor area, yeah. so anytime I am at Copper Tail, I have at least one pint yeah. of the Unholy. And that was definitely Americanized. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I I dialed back a little bit from yeah. that and went a little bit more traditional from that. But uh, that was kind of one of my one of my jumping off points for when designing that recipe. Is that yeah. I love that beer. It's really great triple. It's got a great. Uh, a great alcohol warmth to it, but it also has great yeast character, yeah. um, and so that's one. That's one of the things that I'm really big about is having um, good beers with good yeast character. Yeah. I love that because that's really what makes a beer. Because as brewers, we make wort; the yeast make the beer. Yes, it's really important. Yeah, so it's, it's. I think it's easy to throw like hops out of beer and get a really hoppy beer. Sure. Uh, obviously, like it, you know, it takes some skill to balance it, right. to finesse the hops to be balanced with the balls. Yes. Um, but the yeast character, to me, is one of the one of those things that I love. There's yeah. no way to there's no way to get that other than using the right yeast and taking care of them and taking care of them exactly. Very cool. So what we yeah. got next? This the one next one is read. our Seven Mile Bridge. Oh, seven it's mile, our yes. flagship beer. Um, it's probably our number. It's probably our number two seller, right behind the the Bellevue Biltmore Blue Beer Vanilla Wheat, um, and just just does edge out the Gilded Age Golden Lager by like a very small margin. The Seven Mile, that's a railroad down south, again, built by Plant or Flagler. Henry, Pl Henry Flagler built the Seven Mile Bridge. Um, it's a bridge to Key West. At one point, it was the longest overseas railroad in the world. Um, and yeah, so we so we named it back named after that, sort of harkened back to, you know, the Henry's, uh, back to our roots. Yeah. And, Again, uh, I love this, the history of it, that you're tying everything in with Florida. Yeah. I mean, I'm born and raised here. I, I love the state, you know, other than now in the summer, it's miserably hot. You know, I, I curse that every summer, but you know, it's still my home. And I, I love, yeah. I love digging into the history. And again, it blows my mind, absolutely blows my mind that this is like 125, 130 years ago. I mean, we're not talking like yeah, not, centuries not really, ago. Not really you know? that long ago, yeah. honestly. Uh, I, I looked it up the other day just to see we were talking about doing a uh, like a pre-prohibition pills or oh, something cool. like that. Uh, we were like, well, would the Henrys have even been around during prohibition? Because right. like, honestly, I couldn't remember. Um, but apparently, they were like 1890 to 1910. Right. That yeah. kind of that kind of gap. So um, they probably just missed it. Prohibition, like the well, it started in the 1910s, 1913. Yeah, or something so like that. yeah. yeah, so uh, I think 1921 or something was like okay. the first year of prohibition. So, but like yeah. the the prohibition movement kind of started in the 19, right. okay. 1900s. Um, one of the things that we really like to do is. Uh, We'll throw out like a random name and try to and try to build a beer around it. Right. That's one of my favorite things is, yeah. to, is to have like a is to have a fun name and then like okay well now I have a fun name what would I do with this beer? Yeah. Um, and so that's one of the things that, that's one of the games we play in the brewery where we're yeah. like all right we have uh, this, this I, we had some, we had some kind of name for it I can't remember what it was but we had some kind of name for what our pre-prohibition pilsner would have been and cool. yeah. Yeah, I tried that once. I tried to make an Opa Porter. I tried to make like a Greek Greek infused Porter. I tried to make okay. something that was like a baklava kind of like. like uh, I used walnuts okay. and it was terrible. <laughs> it oh didn't man, that's brutal. I used a little bit of licorice but, to, to to do like the ouzo or whatever. Oh, yeah, like, the ouzo to get so, some like that grape leaf character. Yeah, so yeah. It didn't turn out well, but it was fun to like you know you have a name and you have a concept. You try to build a beer around I did. it. <coughs> Sorry, we can edit that out, right? No, okay. no, we're live. It's oh okay, man. man. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I did, when I was homebrewing a few years back, I did a fruitcake ale, um, <laughs> sort of inspired by okay. uh, Radical Brewing by yeah, Andy Yeah, i the recipe in there, yeah. Yeah, so, it, so basically did that as a, fruit, it a fruitcake out? old ale. <laughs> Honestly, pretty well. Did you go I, per recipe? Per, per well, more, more or less. Okay. I, I, I changed it a little sure. bit, but like, you know, when you're, when you're homebrewing, you put your own little, like, your own little flair yes. on everything. Um, we opened up a bottle of it maybe two or three weeks ago. And this is, mind you, this is a beer that I brewed like three years ago yeah. now, um, and it's gotten really pleasantly funky wow. at this point. Yeah, okay. It's it was not bad. Cool. Let's dig into the seven mile. Yeah, I, yeah, I can talk brewing all day long, so we're bored of folks at home. That's nice, man. It's not. 
it's balanced again. Like I like IPAs when they're balanced. So this is this is another good example of just how everything here is balanced. It's just the right touch of this, right touch of that. Yeah. You said it's English style, so it's a little sweeter. Yeah, we 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 bill it as an English style IPA. It's a so it's a little bit darker, a little bit maltier. Um, we use some uh, some victory malt in there, so you get a really nice biscuity kind right. of quality to it. Um, but we definitely put an American flair on it. The, the, the bulk of the hops are Cascade, Amarillo, um, Simcoe is our dry hop on that. And so, you know, there's definitely a Simcoe nose, so you get a little yep. bit of that pininess, yep. a little bit of that resiny uh, quality to it. And so... I've just started doing IPAs myself, so I'm starting to learn a little more about the hops. And, yeah. Yeah, Simcoe and that pine, and awesome. All right, this is what I'm very interested in. This is, this is your funky beer. This is, this, is, this is our weird beer. It is a core beer for us. We basically always have it on. Um, <laughs> and we, we actually just started putting this out in cans cool. um, into the market in, uh, I guess that was July, so a couple months ago, that we started sending them out in cans into the market. Uh, so we're available, we have this available in, throughout, um, throughout Hillsborough County, Pinellas County, down towards Naples a little okay. bit. And we are, we're also started sending this up over towards Orlando. So Great. this is out and around. And you're and, on the um, corridor. I mean, you got to be able to get something up to Orlando. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Cool. So, so this is a roasted um, jalapeno. Roasted jalapeno blueberry, blueberry porter. porter. Awesome. Um, yeah. I gave a shout out to Mike here, Beer Chaser Mike. Likes weird beers, but doesn't like pepper beers. So, but well, it's actually pleasantly balanced. Again, everything here is balanced. Keyword balance at two Henry's here. Yeah, um, absolutely. You just get a little bit of that pepper kick, but it's not uh, annoyingly hot. The more you drink of it, the more you get the pepper yes. kick. Um, it's definitely blueberries up front. I, it's a, it's a yeah. very blueberry nose. Um, you get a little bit of that pepper kind of scent, and then um, a little bit of smoke character comes through yeah. from the roasting of the jalapenos. We do use a little bit of smoked malt in there, so you get a little bit of that to sort of reinforce yeah. the smoke character. The, the porter carries it well. That style carries it very well. So I yes. think if this was in a lighter style, it'd probably be lighting my tongue up a lot more, but because that yes. the darker yeah. style, it kind of subdues some of that uh, Absolutely. jalapeno. It's Absolutely. actually really good. Um, all around, great stuff. Not, nothing in here under you know a three and a half or a four. I mean, these are really great beers, good style, balanced. I mean, that's, that's one of the things that we really strive for is to be balanced. Um, we're in Plant City, and so I know we have sort of a we have sort of a reputation for you know light beer drinkers and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so we kind of uh, we kind of try to strike a balance between crafty and the light beer drinkers. So you know, obviously on this end we have our Hella's Lager, which is pretty, yeah. which is super accessible for German anybody. Some German stuff. It's a German style, but it's also you know it's. It really easily accessible for you know your macro beer drinkers yeah. and things like that that come in here and they want um, you know they want your your macro style. These are like a transition beer. It's like for your absolutely. father in law who oh, only drinks absolutely. like Bud Light. Absolutely. Like, you can get them to drink like the Hell of Loggers. And... This is the only beer my dad drinks that we make. <laughs> and you know for my. Now. For, you well, you for might now, get him yeah. into this weed eventually. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying to get him get him to go that direction. But we'll we'll see what happens. But you know it's really nice. It's really great to have that option available for. Uh, for people who come here for the winery, so you know uh, that's that's one of the things that's it's it's sort of stereotypical, but a lot of times we have people where guys where you know their wife dragged them to the winery and they come here and they're like, oh, oh great, my you god, got, oh beer. my god, you have beer too? Okay, great, let me get a Bud Light. Well, we don't have Bud Light because we only serve our own beers here because. Why would we serve Bud Light when we have our own beers? Right. But we have, you, you know, stop. where do I? Why do I gotta serve Bud Light? Just stop there. <laughs> well, I, you know, I always tell people like pe people like what they like, and right. you know, it's not, it's, I don't need to proselytize all the time. Right. Um, but uh, so yeah, so that's a great transitioning be transitionary beer for me. I can drink a lot of that. Yeah. It's a, it's four and a half percent alcohol. Um, on a hot summer day, you can, yeah, you can great. drink, you can drink it in mass. It's a great beach beer. Um, and then we have, you know, your fruity beer. Yeah. We have some Belgian styles. We've got the IPA. We kind of, we try to hit all of our bases yeah. as much as we can. It's, it's a um, nice variety. Um, I love the fact you got some German beers. A lot of people overlook German beers. I know a lot of lagers, they take yeah. longer. You got to baby them a little more, but I've always liked German stuff. You have a Belgian here. You have an IPA. You have some funky. You have some fruity. I mean. So I, I, <laughs> I am the third head brewer at Two Henrys. We, we've had uh, some, we've had some turnover there. Yeah. Um, our first head brewer was uh, Clay Keel, um, Joe's Joe Keel's son, as in Joe Keel and Curly. Um, and so these two beers are from him. Uh -huh. uh, our second head brewer, Scott Schuler, 
um, who has since gone on to a uh, brewery up in up in New York, and uh, he was a big he's a German guy. His German was he was tradition uh, he was his heritage was German, um, and so he was really big into brewing um, traditional German lagers. Mm-hmm. And so we have our Helles Lager, and then I think my what my touch on it is the, is the Belgian style. So if you cool. this is a, this is a pretty good representation of the things that we have done so far. I love Belgians because they're they're simple, right? I mean the Belgian triple. 90% Pilsner malt, 10% sugar, the right hops and the right yeast. There's a, there's a, there, there's a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of melanoid in malt or honey malt yeah. in there you, as you well, can do that. and like a little. Just but it's a still little very high level. Body. It's one or two grains, some yeah. sugar, but it's all in the process That's and, and how you you culture the yeast and take care exactly. of the yeast and you age it. So it's simple but complex. Exactly. That's one of the things that I've really been striving for in the last six months or so since I took over, is that I wanted to. I wanted to, wanted to brew things that are simple but delicious. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of the traditional stuff that's traditional for a reason. Um, now, as going forward in the future, I'm gonna start. We're gonna start branching out a little bit and doing some more, not necessarily funky stuff, but it's a little bit different. Um, yeah. I, I'm working on a. We've got a, a Weizenbach uh, cool. in, the, in the fermenter right now. More it's, German. Yeah, more. It's more German, but it's a little bit of a different style. You don't yeah. see a lot of them, right? Um, so it'll be about. I love nine a good per- Weizenbach. There, there aren't that many of them out there. You basically yeah. have um, there's a Weinstefaner, right. um, Weizenbach, Vitus. and yeah, uh, and then there's the Aventinus, right? Um, which from I think Eiger. Yes, yeah. I believe so. Yeah, so those are those are really the only two that you find out there. We're gonna do it a little bit. Uh, I just brewed a Weizenbach two months ago. So there's three. No. Oh, there you go. There you go. Um, we're gonna do it a little bit like a almost like an imperial version of our Bellevue Biltmore. So I'm gonna add some vanilla to it, some, oh, okay. some blueberry. Oh wow! Um, I'm debating whether or not I want to oak it or not. We'll see what happens. Ooh, okay. We'll see. So we'll get some. That's funky. Yeah. So yeah. So we're sort of branching out there a little bit. Um, I definitely want to do. Um, uh, I want to play around with like a purple beer. I, wanna, I just want to make a purple beer for. Something uh, purple. Yeah, <laughs> something purple. Um, I know there's been a couple of breweries. The out anniversary there. of Prince's death, the Purple Rain. There you go. Oh man, itself. that would be great. <laughs> yeah, I was I was actually thinking about that on my drive here. Whether I wanted to do whether I wanted to do it with beets or I wanted to do Ooh. it with uh, purple sweet potatoes, and okay. I don't I don't know which one to go with. But uh, it's one of the things I'm kind of playing around with in my head. So we've yeah. got you know we definitely want to get more into um, some of like the more interesting stuff and things like that. Right yeah. now we've, we're right now we're going through a sort of a transitional phase or a, not transitional a traditional phase. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, definitely playing around with some yeah. of the things that we've got. Um, well, it sounds like there'll always be something new to kind of come back and try. you got some really great staples. Absolutely. Um, I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Um, what's looking forward for Two Henrys? Like, you know, besides some of the beers you're talking about, anything brewery-wise? Are we getting into further distribution? Are we expanding the brew house at all? Or? Yeah, so in uh, so we just started looking at um, building out our new brew house um, up in the... Uh, just just a little bit north of Tampa. Um, okay. I, can't remember, I can't remember what the area is called, but <coughs> sorry. Um, so just a little bit north of Tampa, we're going to be looking at uh, building out a new brew house. We're currently we have a seven barrel brew house. We're looking at building about a twenty barrel brew house, so okay. quite, pretty significantly larger, um, which will allow us so to off off site though. Off site from here, yeah. We're we, because we're on a farm and we're in Plant City, we had kind of have a weird zoning restriction. Makes sense. Uh, we have a cap on. There's the always something going on with the brew laws. I mean, there's there, they're all the um, the teetotalers are always trying to screw the breweries, and yeah. so um, you know we're, we're we have some weird restrictions here because of where we are. Right. Uh, we can only produce X number of barrels yep. per year, and if we want to go over that, we really have to go off site. Okay. Um, and so we're gonna we're looking at building a new brew house out. And uh, which would which would mean some pretty significantly increased distribution, sure. which would be awesome. Have you guys thought about using something like Brew Hub, or are you guys just, you're just ready we, to go? We thought about doing Brew Hub. Um, the commitment at Brew Hub was actually pretty high. Was, okay. Um, they, a they were booked up. Yeah. Like you had you had to get in. We know cigar early cities there. in there, so they're probably pumping so a lot. They're of beer pumping out. They're pumping out basically any of the highlight that you get in cans. From my as far as my understanding goes, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I probably just hit my microphone, so it's all good, man. Knocked it, but um, <laughs> as far as my understanding is, all the highlight that comes out in cans comes from Brew Hub. Yeah, and so like you gotta, you gotta believe. You know, that's a monster. Yeah, there's highlights everywhere. Cigar City can't make enough of it. I mean. No, they can't make enough of it. It's at every gas station. 
every Quickie Mart, every Publix, whatever. So potential and new, so, but, yeah. uh, potential new location, or uh, brew house. Yeah. Potential Anything else? Expanding the kitchen, delivery service, something Ooh, crazy. Oh man, <laughs> Not, nothing, nothing as far as that goes. In November, we're doing our Beer Tober Fest here. Okay. It's our fourth annual yeah, Beer Tober Fest. Yeah, we'll before then, so I'll get the details. Yeah, so it's um, tickets are thirty five dollars, fifty dollars for VIP. Uh, it's from. 11 to 5 on November the 12th. It's a okay. Saturday. Uh, it's going to be us plus 12 other breweries have, have signed up to come out and have a beer festival here. Um, last year we had last year we had a great turnout. We're hoping for an even better turnout this year. Pay your admission, come and try all the beers you want. Exactly. What's yeah. VIP get you? VIP gets you early access. Okay. Really, um, and they're. We haven't hammered out all the details on it. There may be some other stuff on there that I don't really know. VIP get to use the inside bathroom. Non-VIP got to use the portalettes. Yeah, pretty much. Or somewhere on the farm. Yeah, somewhere on the farm. <laughs> you know, we got we got lots of space. Cool. You can find you can find a private spot. Um, but yeah, so we've got Beer Tober Fest coming up in uh, in November, and really just you know pumping out more of pumping out more Biltmore. That's the one that's yeah. That's the one that's that's can't going, make enough of it. Whatever. I can't. I literally cannot make enough of it. <laughs> cool. Ian, thank you so much for your time. Your Absolutely. hospitality, man. It's been a pleasure up here. I mean, the man led us on a personal tour back here. I mean, it's it's not just a brewery. It's an entire facility. It's Farm, experience. Winery, brewery. I mean, yeah. really cool. So I mean, come check these guys out. Great hospitality, great beers, great location. I mean, everything here has been great. As we say, great, 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 great all around. It's all great. In closing, is there anything you want to tell the beer chaser audience? Oh, goodness. Um, drink more two Henrys. There we go. <laughs> Ian, thank you again. Appreciate yeah, it very much. Thank That's you. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm pressing. Ian, we are the Beer Chasers. Mm -hmm. We'll see you later. Beer is good. Beer is good. Beer is good. And stop. Beer is good. Beer is good. Beer is good. Let's go drink some beer.